that you will give us understanding. Anything that will take our spirit away to forget your word, to misunderstand your word. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray and bind it. Let us come and receive your word with meaning and be blessed. We cannot be the same once your word comes to us. So your word will bring blessings and understanding of who you are to us. Thank you for answering our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray with thanksgiving. Let the church say, Amen. 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 Come on, you can be better.
when we finish, we eat and we will die. He said, I should go and make it, give you some before we eat, if you say so. You see, that was a, that was a challenge. Anytime we are faced with toughness. And so we are going to give to God, determine in your mind, I don't have job, I don't have money. What has God done for me? I am looking for documents to stay in this country. It hasn't come to pass. I am looking for a good partner, partner a wife. A, a, it has not. So when you say you should, that is what you have to do. When you put yourself out there in that category, God show you, I am here. Amen. 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 So be tough. Be tough. Today we are talking about count your blessings. Count your blessings. Count your blessings. Let's look into the book of Psalm 103. Psalm 103, verse 1 to 5. Bless Yahweh, O oh my soul, and all within me. Bless his holy name. Bless Yahweh, O oh my soul. Do not forget all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquity? Who heals all your diseases? Who redeems your life from the pit? Who crowns you with loyal love and mercy? Who satisfies your life with good so that your, your youth is renewed like the eagles? Amen. Amen. You see, David had a very strong desire. He is speaking to himself, my soul, my soul, and he's facing God from within, my soul, speaking to himself. He didn't say, please let us say, my soul, recognize who you are and recognize who God is. Always remember, it is not somebody's praise that should make you praise. It is your praise that should energize you to go straight to God. Amen. Amen. In the midst of anything, he says, what? He said, praise God with all that is within me. What is within you? All that is within me. Poverty, anger, richness, disappointments, lost job, lost relationship, lost documents to stay in this country. Everything that is negative and positive Everything must praise you, God. Amen. 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 Learn to do that. Understand that life is like that. It seems that David could be trying to shake off apathy, to arouse his heart to worship. He says, All that is within me, bless the holy name, bless his holy name. It is as though David wants to praise God with every fiber in his life. Everything. You see, it takes a mindset. It takes the readiness of your heart. And looking at all your environment, maybe even in your room, you don't have a locker, a lock. Maybe you are in a place where there is no water. It may be that you are in a situation where you can't even buy more water to drink. Maybe you are in a situation where your, your paycheck is from paycheck to bills. You can't save a dollar. Maybe you are in a situation where everything you deserve is gone, is lost. Maybe you are in a situation where you have been disappointed. You feel like, why me? Why me concept has come in? Maybe. But did David, didn't he have all this kind of thing? He did. But he recognized that there is somebody bigger who is able, in the midst of all that, to take care. So my soul, remember. Don't look at your environment. My soul, remember to praise the God you said. Amen. Hey, 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 somebody. My soul, last week I told you, anytime you see me dress you, it means that it's not Medusa, I'm coming to take your money. 
<laughs> you have to bless pastor this morning. Because pastor is poor. No problem. May it be far from it. Whether poor or rich, be happy. That's right. Praise. That's what David is saying. Praise my soul. Praise your environment. Praise. The moment you do that, you put God in a tight corner. So what, what is making my son praise me? Even in this condition, let me release the blessing. Amen. Amen. Let's be mindful about our environment because God is like that. First thing, praise, give praise. What we are exalted to praise the Lord. We are exalted, exalted. You've been, you've been energized. You see, something must energize you. Something must energize you to bring you to church this morning. You wake up and your environment was telling you that. You have to sleep. You are tired, so tired, buddy. You are you have gone to work. You went to this food program, and then on Sunday, every morning, it will drop in your spirit. Sleep. And that was to me. I said, Pastor, I'm going to preach. And that's okay. I have to pray my message. And Sunday morning, so tired. Last night, I didn't. Even, I slept around four for five a.m. Working. Working from home. Working for who? 5 a.m. And first thing you have to say, you have to go and sleep. You are preaching tomorrow. How will you make it? And then I, 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 I before the computer, I doze, call. So I decided to go and sleep. And here I am. And when I went in the morning, morning, something told me in my spirit. Call me, this time. Set up or change or what? Let them preach. You are tired. And I said to my soul, so wake up. So wake up. That's you right. go preach. That's right. Whether you like it or not, you not you will preach. That's right. And yeah, folks, you must have that mindset in your life. Every time, whatever you are going through, everybody is going through the same. That's right. Whatever that is coming to your mind, the same thing is coming to me. Negative thoughts will come. Slap you. Say no. All these things will come. But my soul. Who do you want to praise? You want to praise the world or praise the things that enjoy you? Anytime you pay attention to the things around you, you are praising those things. Know that. Anytime things are not working fine and you are paying so much attention to it, you want to find out something. Why didn't you come to church? Why didn't you come home on time? You, 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 you know you are married. You know you are Why didn't you come home? Why didn't you want to argue? You are praising that thing. And that thing will never solve. You are praising it, making it go worse. But anytime, anytime, you are within that negative thing, you are doing positive thing, you are praising the positivity, and your answer will be greater. Right. Your God will prove to you that He's a God who knows the positive, not the negatives. Amen. Hello, somebody. Ah. Are you listening or you are sleeping? Don't, don't look at your phone because I'm not reading anything. I want you to look at my face. That's right. Let's move on. Number two. So let, let, me, let me give you a reminder of the book of Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15. Under the topic, the subtopic, give praise. He says, through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips, the fruit of lips that openly profess his name. The fruit of, you see, your lips is a powerful tool that nobody can take over. Your lips, the praise is shouldn't come from anything but your mouth. Hello. Hello? Hi. Enter 
the gate, enter the church with thanksgiving of grace. When you are coming to church, I don't know what is going through your mind, or whatever that is going through your mind, whatever it is, the motivation should be to bring you here. Folks, the enemy will do everything possible to keep you out there. But the, he doesn't want you to come to the presence of God without praise. And so when you are coming to church and things are not right, come with that joy. I am going to worship God. I am going to sing to praise His holy name. That alone becomes a positive, powerful answer. It's a true, it's a secret truth. The enemy doesn't want you to do that. It's a powerful truth. So that by the time we are done, by the time the church is over, by the time we step out there, that place will follow you. That job, it will follow you. You will not follow. You cannot follow grace. Grace must follow you. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. It will follow you. If goodness and mercy are following you, you have no time to worry about anything. Then those things will come. But don't give praise. Don't give attention to those things. Let your mindset be that. Oh, that God I said, that God that opened the windows of the people, the people of Israel, He will open the window for me in my present time. Amen. He will never delay. So remember. That's number two. Remember, forget not his benefit. Enjoyable good health. Number three, enjoyable good health. Good health is a blessing for God and we should never take our health for granted. Never. God does not guarantee healing every time. We get sick, but when you do get sick and recover, it is because God has healed us. Sometimes God let us get sick. For God can even use sickness for our good and for our sanctification. God works through medicine and doctors to heal us. You see, don't make the mistake and let somebody deceive you. If you, are, you have faith in God, don't even take medication. That's stupidity. That is so wrong. God gave wisdom to these doctors. Right. Do you know that the doctors will diagnose you, locate your problem, and they will still write the same medication they gave to me and I got you, you will drink, you will never be healed. You know that? Yeah. I, I, do you know that? Yeah. If you don't know, I'm telling you. The same medication everybody drank, and you drinking it now, you are not healing. That's why it is God who is under. He knows your system. Sometimes the medication they are giving to you is not going to heal that particular. But God, His own mechanism and His own power will heal you through those things. So sickness may come. Under the sickness, if somebody told me a story that the grandmother was sick, diagnosed with cancer. What she did was that in the house, when she realized she was about to die, she would every morning, I know I am healed. I know I am power, I'm strong. I know I will live and enjoy the fruit of my labor. Every morning, about to start, the doctors have declared. Eventually, those positive words that he, she was writing on the wall, those that began to affect him. That affect her personally. And eventually she got healed. The mother, the grandmother is still alive. That's right. Over 100 years. Still enjoying life. Why? You see, you, 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 know, you know that even when you are drinking medication and your system or you have a negative impression about that medication, that medication should work, it will never work. Your system. Your, 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 your mechanism, your factors are against the medication that is supposed to heal you. And for that negativity, you will never get healed. You will drink the medication. It will go through your system. It will, it will come out. Never work. Live with that positivity. Enjoy the positiveness of what God 
is about to do it in her life. Your good health, it is not easy to wake up and be normal. And for that matter, you can't recognize that I am normal. This morning, thank you, Jesus. You can't do that. You are not doing the right thing. And you will not get the, 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 the answer right. Number four, redeem from spiritual and physical destruction. God redeems us. The reason why David is saying, praise my soul, praise my soul. God has redeemed us. Do you know what happened tonight when you slept last night? Do you know the demons they came around and they couldn't touch you? Do you know what they planned to mess up with your system and it didn't work? And you wake up, every part of you is fine. And you still cannot say, praise my soul. When you come to church and you are singing, you are praising God, whatever it is, at least lift up your hands. Say, my soul, I am here. I am in the presence of God. I am checking up myself in heaven. Heaven, I am here. Pastor, so if I didn't lift up my hands, heaven doesn't know I'm here. They don't know you are here. Heaven doesn't know you are here. Why? If you don't open your mouth to confess Jesus, even though Jesus has come and died for you, you will never get salvation. Does that make sense? That's a scenario that, 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 that the mouth works together. Why am I lifting up my hands? I'm lifting up my hands because my conscience and my everything, my soul, is recognizing the presence and what God has done. That is what the man is. If I don't open my mouth to confess Jesus, even though he has come to die for me, I will never be saved. Never get salvation. Never. No matter what you die in my sin. But when I recognize that is Jesus, who came, who came to die for my sin, Father, forgive me of my sins. I am a sinner. Come and stay in my heart. All that I have done, write it out. Write it out. And come and live with me. I no longer want to live for myself. I want the moment you confess that, whether it's public or private, you get salvation. Right. That is so easy. And so if you don't check yourself in, there is at a point, I think it was CCC. At the point they had a system where they have put at the back of the church. When you come, you rub yourself in and you check, you check yourself in. I am present. Why should you do that? Don't they know you are here? They know, but like, they want you to check yourself in. The same thing happens in heaven. Check yourself in when you come to church. Check yourself. My soul, you are here. My soul, whatever it is, forget about it. I am in the presence of the living God. Let me worship my God. For he knows all that I am going through. He is aware. And for recognizing him, he will take care of my needs. Folks, it is a very powerful tool. It works powerful. Let us remember. Let us understand that. Lastly, so when you under that same topic, when you look at the book of John, chapter 10. Verse 7 says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The good shepherd. Christ is a good shepherd. He laid down. So recognize the presence of where you are. He takes care of our spiritual and physical destruction that comes. Lastly, his mercies and provision. We are to be thankful for God's loving kindness and tender mercies. God's mercies are great. God does not give us what we deserve. His grace is unmerited and undeserved. His grace doesn't have any measure. It's above limitation. Hello? So be happy. You are not showing any happiness in your face this morning. Why? Pastor, we are in the 11th hour. We preached last week. 11th hour, 11th hour, and I haven't seen anything. 
The moment you go that route, you will not see anything. Right. <laughs> it's so it's so mechanical. The moment you go that route, I have you seen that? I'm, I'm expecting this. Uh, uh, but the eleventh hour, we are in November. December is about this year is just wiping away, and I haven't still seen anything. Stop it! Come on, when you go home, come on, hey, thank you, Jesus. And, and then they will just ah, why is she happy? No, don't tell anybody why you are. Don't tell them. So I'm, 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 what are you going to explain? Because you haven't seen it, and you are happy. Why are you going to explain? You can't explain, so don't tell anybody. Just be happy. Recognize that my God is a loving hour. And you will do it on a fifth year. Hello? Right. 
driving, going this way. When you are driving, when I am driving, normal driving everywhere, Ghana everywhere. If you are going this way, you have to be on the right side. I love that driving and the, the other opposite of me. But in London, you have to be here. Drive that this way, and then the other opposite car will be coming. So it's opposite direction. And the steer is also on a different direction. This is it's not on the left side, it's on the right. And so for me to be able to use a bicycle, I must understand the system, how it works. Otherwise, I will die. I will be knocked down by a car. I bought a bicycle. I studied the system very well. In fact, to the point before I left London, I was able to drive. Reverend Ajiman gave me one of his cars, so I was able to drive. I used a bicycle. So after working for more than 12 hours, nice shit, no, eight hours, nice shit, tired. Imagine how our water was telling me working with that kind of aggressiveness, sweating, tired. Folks, tired. All my joints are weak. I will pick my bicycle and I will outrun those in the bus. I will outrun them before I get to the having to them. Force me that kind of aggressiveness and hard. Man, the way I did it was so nice and so smooth. One guy said, Oh, also, Pastor, the way you. I, I, why did you buy the rest of I, I think it's, you are saving money. I say, I'm saving money. Every week I'm saving about 50 something pounds. Okay. I, 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 well, he also went and bought. He buy, went and buy. Not read them, but it's English. Yeah. <laughs> went them back. And his bicycle. Follow me. We will ride right together. In the weather, very cold weather. One time, somebody threw something at me. I don't know what I did wrong. Threw something at me. Hit me big time on the roadside. I fell down on the, on the snow, but I picked my bicycle and went in. What kind of? In the snow, riding a bicycle in London. If you have ever been in London before, Mr. James have been there, you will tell the weather is very cold, extremely. And so, right there, as I'm telling you, with that bicycle, that aggressiveness, this guy followed me. He was so motivated by the way I'm saving money, using the bicycle, and be able to outrun the bus. The normal one, when the bus will stop, every stop. But by the time he stopped, I am, I'm, I'm going. Eventually, about three weeks, he stopped coming. I said, where's your bicycle? I can't. Why? No, no, no. By the time I get to him, I, 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 I've crashed. I said, no. Keep. I did my bicycle for more than six months. And when I was coming, somebody came and begged for it, so I gave it to him. One guy gave it to him for free. Folks, within that temperature and that environment, I will wire the money back to Africa and my children will be enjoying. But they didn't know what, that he was going to You cannot look at your environment and make a decision negatively. Look at your environment make positive decisions. For that was what will motivate God and bring you answer. When anybody was complaining, why the Red Sea? This is the Red Sea. What is you have, you have let us leave. Leave the good things in Egypt. Now the Egyptians are coming to kill us. Now look at what you have done. You are just cheerful. You should have left. allow us to die in Egypt. When anybody was complaining, Moses lifted up his eyes onto the hips. Up there, positively look at God. What should I do? Folks, look at the environment. We are going to give thanks to God. This year. Twenty thousand dollars we are raising. Amen. I don't have money. That day I won't come to church. That's okay. That is you and your how you see your God. Hello. I don't have money. I will be the first person to be in church. That's right. That is you and your God. Make that positive thinking. Decide that if you don't have money, how will I praise my God? Let your soul speak to you. How will I praise God? I don't have it. How? Begin to think through. For your God is the God. My soul, forget not his good works. My soul, 
shut down and see how it's going to be now. You just, you just get sick. Intentionally get sick. And let all your bones get ready to come up and see how it is to be on the bed. On the bed to be fed by somebody. Have you seen somebody sick before? How do you, when you go there, how do you see those who, are, who work at the nurse, nursing, at the nursing hospital or other hospitals, nurses? How, how, do you, how, how do you see the patients? Very, very depressed. Very painful. Sometimes you see somebody, you, you step outside, you cry for the person. Sometimes you feel it. And you look at you, God has saved you, brought you this far. My soul has said, bring, 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 bring the, the, the passage of the Lord. Let me, let me analyze it a little bit, and then we will, we will, we will take our title from the time. So. Folks, let us understand that David didn't have life easy. It's for him to write my soul. Praise God. Forget what is benefit. He didn't take it light. Things were not very smooth. That is why and that is when he wrote that. Things were hard. Hello? But in the midst of the hardness, he ignored and looked up and there was an answer in his life. Hello? You know what David? It took him over 16 years when he was anointed king. He continues serving as a servant. Patiently. Until the time came. Be patient. You'll be a king. Amen. You'll be a millionaire. Amen. You are a millionaire. Amen. How positive thinking that I was in mind. He said, Oh, then, then, what is it? Praise the Lord, my soul. Oh, my innermost, my inmost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul. Forget not his benefit. And then the verse 2, he outlined all the benefits. He outlined. In fact, when I look at my age and look at what I can do, that alone is a million dollars for me. Amen. Hello, you didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. <laughs> When I look at myself and I check what I can do physically, that alone is enough to say thank you, Jesus. That alone, that alone, that alone. What are you going to use? What are you going to check? What are you going to tell your soul? My soul. You have not been able to save even $500. My soul, when you are going to give thanks to God, my soul, what are you going to give to God? <laughs> but your soul doesn't have any answer, but your spirit will get you the answer. Then all that you say will always, at the eleventh hour, it happened in everybody's life. It has happened in everybody who has followed God. God, you see, if if Abraham had not taken Isaac to the camp or to the mountains to sacrifice him as God has demanded, where would have been his testimony? You are the God of the eleventh hour. That is your name. It means you are the God who doesn't delay. Who is never a mistake? Who is never disappointed? Who will never disappoint his children? Father, we pray the spirit in Abraham that put him to tie you, God, your hands, to sign a treaty, to sign, to, to sign a bond. That you will bless him and his descendants. Whatever he did is what we are requesting for. Give us that spirit. Give us that motivation. Give us the power to be able to look at our soul and tell our soul, forget not what God has done. My soul, from today to the, to, to the end of December, forget not what my God has done. At least, if he hasn't done anything, he has given me life. Father, I pray that you 
children will not recognize this. It is time for us to give our offering intact. We ask the Lord as we prepare to give. Let your children remember what you have done for them and give to you. And such you will bless. So I pray that you bless your children in Jesus' mighty name. I pray with us. Let us say, Amen. Amen. Amen.